All right, look at us. Here to do a different little video today. Uh, we're doing a lot of the dark side stuff lately. It's kind of bumming me out. It's time to move on to something a little brighter. Today I'm going to be telling you of uh, some of the things that have been invented in New York City or have their origins in New York City. A lot more things than you'd think. In fact, I've covered them a lot of them in my past videos, things like Oreos in my meatpacking video. Also, you know, elevators. I covered that in my Soho video. Uh, also, you know, uh, other stuff, you know? I, <laughs> thanks. But uh, how are you doing, Eric? Doing good. Yeah, everything good? Uh, well, I, I say this all because we're starting here in, uh, in Bryant Park because this is where the elevator was debuted by Elisha Otis. You guys may recognize the name Otis from Elevators All Over the World. He debuted his elevator here, talked about that uh, in a different video, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. But uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the lesser known inventions from New York City. Before we start, come on, check out the Patreon. Ah, what are you waiting for? You know, yeah, get some extras over there, <laughs> you know, and also funds these things also too. Uh, give the thumbs up, that helps a ton, and subscribe as well. <sighs> yeah, it's cool because so many things that you may not know about got their start here in New York. I mean, New York also has, you know, uh, enhanced a lot of different things that may have started somewhere else. Things like punk music, the brassiere, uh, public urination. Those things have all been, uh, you know, improved upon here in New York City. But uh, like I said, we're going to talk about the things that you may not know about that got their start here. So uh, I don't know, Eric, what do you think? Uh, should, we, uh, should we start this thing? Off to the first one. Off to the first one. All right, so we are here at the location of 41 Ann Street. Okay, this building isn't anything that fancy or whatever, but the site that it's located on was. In 1857, this was the home, this, this actual location was the home to uh, Joseph Gaiety's drugstore, where he began selling toilet paper. Uh, for 50 cents for 500 sheets. That's a dollar for every thousand sheets. Uh, yeah, I pretty much invented math myself. Uh, and wait, some of you guys may be thinking, hold on a second, Tom. I know that the Chinese aristocracy were using toilet paper as early as the 6th century. Uh, well, first of all, don't ever even think of interrupting me again, okay? And second of all, I'm talking about commercially available toilet paper. The idea that people can use toilet paper to, you know, take care of business after going to take care of business, you know? So he started selling this, it was medicated, he included aloe on it, and it was made from manila hemp. And it was actually uh, individual sheets, each one with the J.C. Gaiety monogram on it. So you were literally wiping your ass with his name every single time you went to the bathroom. Now, believe it or not, before this, uh, different things were used to, you know, go to the restroom. Uh, it wasn't paper, it was things like, you know, rags, uh, used water. People used corn cobs. <coughs> corn cobs. Yeah. You're like, uh, honey, I gotta go to the bathroom. You got any uh, extra corn cobs lying around? Oh, no corn cobs? Uh, what about whole pineapples? I can't imagine anything more uncomfortable than a corn cob to wipe your uh, butt with. Uh, anyways, uh, so he releases these papers. Uh, they're each individual sheets. They actually don't take initially. And one of the reasons was because people were so like taboo about talking about their excrement that uh, people were embarrassed to buy the stuff. So later on, uh, another company introduces, uh, they introduce uh, perforated rolls and that was the Scott Company. You guys may recognize the Scott Company. They're still around today. Uh, they're famous for making rolls of sandpaper that you use when you go to the bathroom. I don't know if you ever use that toilet paper, good Lord. It's always disappointing when you go over to someone's house or something and that's the kind of toilet paper they have. Uh, anyways, obviously this is not sponsored content. Um, but it's interesting too, is that people use different things before toilet paper. So for example, uh, paper I was saying was used out of newspapers and magazines. So for example, Farmer's Almanac, which is a magazine that's still around today, introduced a perforated hole in its corner so it could be hung from a rope in outhouses. Uh, and it's still, the, the hole is still there today in the magazine because it was so commonly used as 
uh, toilet paper uh, before the advent of the actual toilet paper. Uh, so it's kind of interesting how that, how that uh, happens. Uh, did you know that, Eric, that they, the magazine Farmer's Almanac? Kind of cool. Next time you uh, pick up the Farmer's Almanac uh, swimsuit edition, you'll see that the little hole there is a... Uh, uh, you know. Watch out for that. Yeah. And the way that uh, the toilet paper actually eventually worked its way into the mainstream, uh, yeah, mainstream toilet paper, okay, yeah, haha, was the way that is the Scott brothers and other companies started to kind of push them on hotels and different organizations where people just kind of started seeing it around and it started to slowly work its way into people's consciousness that you need toilet paper to go to the bathroom. What a concept. Man, it must have really stunk back then. The streets, people walking around, I wouldn't want to shake anyone's hand back then, you know? Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of stuff's, stuff's changed a lot, which is, which is good to know. Uh, you know that, Eric? Toilet paper, commercially available toilet paper. Invented in New York, pretty cool, huh? Are you familiar with the free seashells? I am, that's from uh, Demol Demolition Man, yeah, yeah. the classic movie. You're gonna rec try to recommend that to me too? You recommended me Matrix, the new Matrix, and I'm, already, I'm still sore about that. Uh, it's like you gave me a corn cob to wipe my ass with, with that movie. <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, let's, uh, what, we gotta keep moving. What do you think, Eric? Let's go to the next yeah, spot? Let's, let's get out of here. Let's do it. Hell, all right, we're now at our next stop. We're at Cooper Square, Cooper Triangle, here in the East Village, where the next invention originated, and that is Jell-O. Okay, and you guys are already keyboard PhD in already, you're already ready to type it up. I know Jell-O wasn't invented here. Okay, but this is kind of how it originated, and let me explain. The guy behind me is named Peter Cooper, who in 1845 patented powdered gelatin. Now this guy, just a little bit of background. So Peter Cooper was an inventor who created the American steam locomotive. He ran for president under the Greenback Party in 1876 at the age of 85. He started a Cooper Union Honors College for Engineering, Arts, and Architecture, and he was a pioneer of the disgusting neckbeard if you can't tell. Uh, but anyways, really important guy. He started this school, which is a, was an honors college for engineering, arts, and architecture. But uh, in 1845, he patented powdered gelatin. Before then, you needed to like boil down horse hooves and like cartilage of animals to make gelatin. Uh, but with this invention, you can make it make real quickly. And he actually suggested using things like lime and lemon and uh, you know, different kinds of custards to make things like uh, uh, flan or maybe you pronounce it flan, them there flan. Uh, so he kind of gets the ball rolling with this thing. He didn't focus a ton of attention on it because he was busy, you know, making other stuff. He had a glue factory, all these other things. But in 1895, a guy named uh, Leo Hirschfield kind of takes it and runs with it. Uh, and he creates his product, which is called Bromangelon. That's right, Eric, you're my Bromangelon, huh? Yeah, anyways, our Bromangelon, Leo Hirschfield, uh, you know, it wasn't the best name. Uh, but he pushes it, doesn't really take off a whole lot uh, until 1897 when it's picked up by this guy named Pearl Bixby Waite, who from his wife's suggestion, uh, in, this is by the way, this is in Leroy, New York, not in New York City, he gives it the name Jell-O. She suggests the name Jell-O. And so probably for the rest of her life, she has to hear her husband stay completely silent when people compliment him on how great of a name Jell-O is. Uh, but this Leo Hirschfield guy, our Bromangelon, he didn't, he learned his lesson. He gave his next uh, products better names. For example, uh, he named a chocolate candy that he created after uh, his daughter's nickname, which is Tootsie. Tootsie Rolls. Oh, he named Tootsie Rolls after his daughter's nickname. Well, it makes me think that it's a good thing uh, my parents didn't create a candy based on uh, their nickname for me, or else we'd all be eating, you know, failed lawyer Sun Pops. Right, Eric? Well, it's Sun S O N pops. Uh, we'll work on it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Leo Hirschfield also uh, created other candies like uh, Blow Pops and uh, Junior Mints. Very refreshing. That was my. Uh, oh, you know the reference, Eric? I still don't know the reference. Seinfeld. That was uh, that was my best Kramer. Very refreshing. You know that episode? Sure. All right. It's no, uh, you know, Matrix Revolutions or whatever you're watching, but a uh, pretty good show. All right, Eric, you ready to go to the next spot? Yeah, let's leave. Let's do it. Uh, 
So I'm here at our next spot, 28 East 20th Street, which is the birthplace of Teddy Roosevelt. Now, nothing was actually invented here, but a very famous concept did originate with President Teddy Roosevelt. Um, so on November 14th, 1902, while Teddy Roosevelt was still president of the United States, oh, very fancy, uh, he actually went on a hunting trip in Onward, Mississippi, near there, and uh, wasn't having any luck catching bears or shooting bears, which is what he was going after. So two of his assistants go off and they wrangle a bear and tie it to a tree and say, hey, Teddy, why don't you shoot this? And he says, no, because that would be unsportsmanlike, as opposed to creeping up on it uh, while hiding and shooting it with a massive gun, which I guess is a lot fairer. Uh, anyways, he says no. Word of that, this hunting trip gets out. Two days later, a man named Clifford Berryman, very famous cartoonist, publishes a cartoon in the Washington Post uh, depicting Teddy saying that's where he draws the line, you know, isn't going to shoot some innocent bear. And a man, Morris, and his wife Rose Michtum, their toy designers, hear about the story and they actually ask the White House if it's okay to uh, use Teddy's name for a toy. That toy, which they actually approved, was called the teddy bear. Ah, oh, the stuffed animal, the teddy bear. Isn't that crazy? It takes off, it becomes a thing. Uh, very, very famous, uh, you know, we call any stuffed bears now teddy bears. Uh, interestingly enough, his assistant, Teddy Roosevelt's assistant on that trip, was named Holt Collier. And he was, this is the guy who wrangled the bear. This guy was a former slave who, who killed his first bear at age 10. I, I mean, I wasn't even burning ants with a magnifying glass until like three weeks ago. Uh, that's not true, all right, you, uh, you know, PETA heads or whatever. Just kidding. Uh, but anyways, this guy was the one who helped Teddy Roosevelt. He ended up dying. He, he'd killed like 3,000 bears in his lifetime. Very big assistant. He's the guy who actually tied the bear for Teddy Roosevelt. Also, too, interestingly enough, uh, the Michtums, uh, with the success of the teddy bear, were actually able to parlay that into other toys for the same company, including the Rubik's Cube uh, and, and eventually Mousetrap, the game Mousetrap. Uh, you know that game, Eric? I do. That's a game where, yeah, I guess leave it to New York to make a game of, of catching mice for kids. Uh, it probably beat out the other game of, uh, you know, uh, wrangle those bed bugs uh, or whatever, but uh, yeah, very two very popular games for what became the ideal toy company. Uh, so all originated with the teddy bear, which was named after Teddy Roosevelt. Pretty cool, huh? The ideal toy company also made lots of dolls, including the Betsy Wetsy doll, which uh, which is a doll that would pee itself uh, if you filled it with water. Uh, kind of weird. I guess they, they probably had to stop selling it when uh, too many perverts were buying it and using it as a water bottle at the gym. Uh, pretty gross, huh? All right, well, anyways, uh, the teddy bear became a, such a universal concept that other bears in the future kind of played off the same uh, theme. Things like, you know, Care Bears, you know, the movie Ted, and uh, Teddy Ruxpin. You remember Teddy Ruxpin, Eric? Uh, no. Teddy Ruxpin was the one's like, hi, I'm Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? It was like the one where their mouth moved and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, they actually, so this is true, the, the rights to that, to Teddy Ruxpin, were just recently bought in Hollywood to make a movie. Unbelievable, man. I'm sure they'll get, like, you know, Kevin Hart or The Rock to play him or something. All right, well, hopefully I don't get replaced by Kevin Hart one day. But, uh, all right, well, uh, that's pretty much it, Eric. What do you think? Should we move on to the next spot? Yeah. Pretty cool, see. Teddy Bear, huh? Nice, that's a good story. We're going to get out of here before you're replaced by Talking Bear and <laughs> yeah, talking bear. Teddy, Teddy P, NYC. That's it. All right. All right, well, let's keep moving. All right, well, I'm here at our last spot. This is 33 West 33rd Street, where in the mid-1900s, a concept was hatched that engulfed the entire world and changed it completely as we know it. This is where the universal credit card was born, and simultaneously where the idea of buying a ton of shit you don't need was also born. So the story is that a guy named uh, Frank McNamara used to work here at the Empire State Building. He had his uh, credit corp, uh, corporation, uh, you know, credit union type thing, uh, and he was having trouble, you know, coming up with different ways to give credit. And he was with uh, a man named Ralph Schneider, who was his attorney, and a man named Al Bloomingdale of the Bloomingdale's family. Oh, yeah, Bloomingdale's a fancy 
you know, department store. This is all Bloomingdale's here, uh, up and down Bloomingdale's. Uh, no, it's not, it's all outlets. But uh, they were all just having dinner. And he was trying to come up with different ways to, you know, uh, give credit, make money, right? He thought with his friends that, wait, wouldn't it be great if restaurants all combined together to let you, uh, you know, pay on credit, right? Now at the time, the different stores had their idea of credit cards where you could get credit at a certain store. The airline industry even had one, but there was no idea of a card that just worked at different retailers, right? So that day, they came up and talked with this idea. They brought over Major Sats, who was the actual owner of the restaurant, and asked him, hey dude, if we had this idea of a card and a middleman who we could uh, use to pay with credit, how much would you uh, want that person to charge you? And he said, 7%. Okay, fast forward a year into 1950, and back comes Frank McNamara with Ralph Schneider and another man named Matty Simmons. Uh, and he uses the first ever Diners Club credit card, number 1,000, to pay for his dinner here. Pretty crazy, the Diners Club card is still around today. Fast forward to 1952, company starts turning a profit. Uh, Matty Simmons is actually in charge with uh, kind of getting other restaurants on board. He had lots of connections. Actually, Matty Simmons ended up going on to produce the movie Animal House also as well. A real renaissance man <laughs> creates the Diners Club card and, you know, Animal House. Uh, so I was born here in 1958 then, come along other competitors like uh, what was the predecessor to Visa and also uh, American Express. Oh, look at that. Then in the 1960s, the Diners Club card goes from cardboard to plastic. Then fast forward to present day, and you have credit card companies bombarding 18-year-olds with their first credit cards so they can live a life in the chains of debt. What a beautiful thing. It all started right here, Eric. You got a lot of credit card debt, Eric? I have no credit card debt. Good for you, neither do I. I try to live my life in cash, baby, off the grid. Uh, but yeah, it all started right here at uh, what was Major's Cabin and Grill. Um, kind of interesting, credit, credit cards have revolutionized the way we shop. You can buy online, do all kinds of stuff that you wouldn't have been able to do before. You know, you could pay for your education with credit cards, <laughs> which is what people do. Yeah, you could even like, you know, tell your friend when, when you see puddles like this, say, hey, how much uh, would I have to pay you to drink this? And probably charge that to the credit card. Yeah, or you know, a cash app. How much would it? How much would it? Would I have to give you in credit card money to have you drink a cup of this, Eric? We'll have to discuss it later. All right. All right. Well, um, that's it, man. Let's go. Uh, let's go to the last stop. What do you think, Eric? All right. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, we're back to where we started, back in Bryant Park. Well, guys, that was, uh, that was the, uh, you know, that was the video. Covered some cool stuff. Started out downtown, lower Manhattan. We started out with toilet paper, huh? A little potty humor. <laughs> Never heard anybody. Okay, from there we went north. Went to, uh, you know, Cooper Square, Cooper, Cooper Union. Talked about uh, the origins of Jell-O, which was pretty cool. Pretty jiggly, <laughs> you know. Uh, didn't mention Bill Cosby once. Look at that, isn't that crazy? Also, too, from there, we went to uh, Teddy Roosevelt's birthplace to talk about the origins of the teddy bear, which although they weren't invented there, uh, originated there, uh, although the teddy bear was invented in New York City. Uh, and then we ended it uh, at, right near the Empire State Building, where the credit card was invented. Uh, so, pretty cool, we covered a lot of stuff there, huh, Eric? We did, we also had Oreos. Oreos? Yeah, Oreos were invented, I said that at the beginning, but uh, Oreos were invented uh, at the Nabisco factory, which is now today's Chelsea Market. Well, I covered that in a different video. I don't have time for all that. There's other stuff that was invented in New York too. I mean, the English muffin was invented in New York. Scrabble was invented in New York. I mean, we can go down the list of all the stuff, but I didn't want to spend too much time on that. Anyways, uh, you know, like I said before, like the video, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, you know, give it some guy just took a picture of me doing this. Did you see that? Some guy just like took a, <laughs> I wonder if he even knows what this is. He's just like, oh, that guy's being filmed. I should just take a picture. Hey, honey, look at my pictures from New York. Here's the Empire State Building. Here's some guy getting filmed in Bryant Park. <sighs> I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, like the video, subscribe, and also please check out the Patreon. That helps a ton. 
uh, you know, help support, help, uh, you know, helps fund these things, and also, you know, some extras, like I said before. <laughs> Uh, right. Anyways, uh, we're in Bride Park. What do you think, Eric? Should we just uh, call it and go have some, uh, you know, hot cider? Wow. Very tense. A lot of buildup. Pregnant pause. It's, uh, you learn that in uh, performing arts schools. Yeah, too pregnant. Exactly. Ready to give birth. Silence. All right. That's enough of the rambling. What do you think? Done. Yeah, let's get out of here. All right, let's go. Oh. Tick. <laughs>